Welcome back to Dear Amber, Chinese Pod's insider's guide to everything China. Today we talk a bit about the mysteries of feng shui, and we hear a few more tales about working as a foreigner in China. And we have a great and often pondered question about face masks. Plus, we have a special news segment on how to say something in Chinese that you won't learn anywhere else. This question comes from Jill. Jill writes to Dear Amber, "Can you explain what feng shui is and how it came about?" Mm. Now, feng shui. I've invited Jenny here to talk about. Is Hello. This, yeah, feng shui. Is, it's from China, right, Jenny?、Mm. Yeah, it's a very ancient Chinese art and a body, a very sophisticated body of knowledge. It's based on the old Taoist vision and understanding of nature. Thus, the name feng shui. Feng、oh. means wind, which、uh, has always. Be associated with good harvest and good health, and shui、uh, connected to good fortune and livelihood. Thus, good feng shui means you can have all of those blessings in life. So it has to do with Taoism, is that right?、Mm, so、yes. is it kind of religious based a little bit, or、uh, what is Taoism? Is it a religion that worships nature? Is that why it would be yeah, feng shui? Yeah, it's、oh. a religion and also a school of thought,、oh. understanding of nature. So, like,、mm. how many thousands of years do you think feng shui goes back? Do you know?、Uh, I did a bit of research、Whoa. and <laughs> it went back all the way to about three thousand years ago. Wow, that's amazing!、Mm. So I bet、yes. feng shui must have changed a lot from then till now. To the feng shui that people in the West know, like I think most people in the West, when they think of feng shui, maybe Jill's the same. You know, we kind of it has like that cool yeah, aesthetic zen. neo Zenish vibe. Yeah,、right? but actually, people I've met a lot of people in Taiwan. I don't know about China.、Mm. Maybe you can tell us, Jenny. But they take it quite seriously, like in、mm. their homes. Yes, in China too.、Mm. I would say in the south, people tend to have an even stronger belief in feng shui,、really? and I've noticed a lot of business people.、Mm. They really believe in feng shui because the entire principle of feng shui is by arranging、uh, your relationship with nature or. The environment you live in, you can change your fortune, or you can at least improve your fortune. So good feng shui brings you the blessings and good fortune in life, whereas bad feng shui can really break you. Yeah,、so、it's a make or break thing. Can you give some examples of different like feng shui principles, like? Um, mm. Maybe some people don't know. Like I remember one thing in Taiwan was people would put a mirror、um, at the door, so it was、yeah. facing the door. Why is that? Do you know? Some people say it's to、uh, reflect bad luck. Okay. Back, like outside.、Mm. So some some principles of luxury are a little bit.、Um, maybe they have to do with superstition.、Mm. Maybe over time, superstitions have, de- have developed, right? Yeah, people's own interpretations. Yeah, and what else is like? Is it things about placing the furniture, or、mm. what exactly is it? Placing positioning is key to feng shui, and we have to talk about ba gua. You know the 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 diagram. Uh huh. There's a diagram. Yeah, the diagram. It's basically a compass、oh. that help you to find out which areas of your space are connected to specific areas in your life. Wow, it sounds so complicated. How do people like? Do they determine for themselves? Is there books, or are they like、it's、experts or something? Books, books,、mm. uh, principles, and experts, feng shui masters. Oh, like you can hire someone. Help you, yeah, yeah, yeah,、ah. to position where you live and、uh, how to arrange your furniture. So, do you think like even people's homes they have this feng shui principle? Some people、mm. does it affect like daily life in China at all? Like, do you think like city planning or streets do they take that into account as well? Oh,、like、I don't、shui? know about them, but I do know many property developers before、mm. they. Uh, purchase a piece of land, and before construction, they will hire a feng shui master. Oh, really? To look at the place first, where they sell. Oh,、mm. and maybe I'm thinking those、um, xiao chu, like the apartment、yes. complexes. Maybe they sort of position the buildings certain ways. Yeah. Way. We often have people tell us things like, "I gave learning Mandarin a shot, but then I realized I really don't have enough time to commit to it." Folks who felt this way love Chinese Pod Recap. In as little as 90 seconds a day, you can refresh what you've learned so far, while adding a bit of what's new to your daily learning. An innovative language learning tool to fit the busy, fast-paced lifestyle of today's professionals.、Mm. Oh, that's interesting. So our lives are all affected by feng shui、yeah. inadvertently, <laughs> whether we know it or not.、Yes. <laughs> 
So one thing I was thinking is, I wonder how it is or when it was that feng shui came to the West. Because, mm -hmm. it, you know, a few years back, it was really popular. What do you think, Jenny? Like, what, what do you think made it appeal to people in the West? I think it's more a lifestyle movement. Uh, I think so, yeah, too. And aesthetics. Yeah, because Western people, I mean, they're really into furnishing their houses, yeah. right? And I was reading something earlier on feng shui that said um, some of the principles also are like having a really comfortable bedroom and nice lighting and that mm. sort of stuff, too, right? Because essentially it's about finding harmony uh, between human beings and the environment. Yeah, I think that's probably what the West liked about it. And probably the influx of Chinese immigrants to mm. the West also, like it was something very interesting and new to us, yes. right? And also the real practical benefits of feng shui. Uh, a lot of the principles, you know, clearing out clutter, oh, that's uh, right. having open space, having clean air, like they make you feel better. Yeah. So even if maybe like you don't believe in sort of uh, the spiritual side of it, even you, just aesthetically, it's yeah. kind of pleasing to your eye to not have like yeah, a cluttered, so messy house. <laughs> exactly. The outcome, it, it yeah. does for you mentally. It, it's yeah. good. Mm. And how about you, Jenny? Do you believe in feng shui? Uh, not really. Yeah. No. But you believe but in no clutter. Maybe my xiao chu, my apartment. <laughs> hey, you know what I was it's feng shui. It was feng shui. So. Feng shui friendly. <laughs> yes. Hey, I was wondering what I w was thinking about this question. I was looking around the Chinese pot office. Do you think it has feng shui? Is it like Not compatible? Not at all. Oh, really? Okay, so what's wrong with it? There are cables everywhere. Oh, you can't have cables. And also, I think the door Flutter. faces the windows. <laughs> and the, so this, like, I think there's something about that too, uh, we right? We might need to feng shui the place. Yeah. Uh, the office. Oh, yeah. So maybe we have to think about that. <laughs> well, I think it's getting torn down next year anyways, right? So oh. How <laughs> maybe sad. that's why. <laughs> okay. okay, so thanks, Jenny, for talking about feng shui with us. Mm. And everybody, the good news is that we actually have an advanced lesson on feng shui. So you can go and learn more about feng shui on ChinesePod.com. Okay, our next question comes from Jack in DC. He writes, Dear Amber, what's it like working in China? Again, I have two experts here. Thank goodness, Galen and Robert. Back. Howdy. Thanks, guys. We should change our names. <laughs> <laughs> Put a sock over the microphone and disguise your voice. Yeah, you should have changed your names thinking about all the other things you guys have admitted on Dear Amber. Yeah. But, okay, so you guys are both kind of like different different um, professions that you've worked in in China, right? How about, Galen, you first? Like, what have you done in China? What's your job? Well, uh, first time in China, I did an internship at Motorola at the semiconductor plant. And so like a big a multinational company. Big multinational company um, up in Tianjin, right mm -hmm. near Beijing. And so I've worked and learned a lot about semiconductor stuff. My current work now, I got lucky. I found a, got a, into a uh, joint venture, a startup joint venture between a, an American private equity group with the Jinjiang Jihuan, the big Jinjiang group here in Shanghai, or Anyway, so the only white face foreigner in the company, um, and all my bosses are Chinese. Uh, so did you have to use your Chinese at work? Only yeah, you and that was in Chinese. actually to get the job, I had to do my interview. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Like, do <laughs> yeah. foreigners have to speak Chinese, do you think, to get a job like that in China? Um, my job, yes, because I had my interview over the phone, but at that time, I mean, my Chinese was at a level where I didn't, like, totally forget it, but I had... Um, I was definitely rusty, and it had been a long time since I'd used it. So I came to Shanghai, and everything's in Chinese. Our HR, all the email correspondence within the company is all in Chinese characters, and all the meetings. Wow, it's a crash course. It, um, it really... So it's good to know you can learn on the job as well. Like, maybe oh, they won't expect you to have, like, perfect Chinese. Absolutely. But as long as you can communicate. Yeah, but, you know, it was, but it was crazy because I, we would also have to have, like, meetings, you know, where I would have to report... In wow. Chinese on what, you know, what I'm doing, you know, what business, what sales, what whatever I was in charge of that time at that time. So that really that's another thing, you know, my Yali. Like, Yali team da. So uh, I had to read a lot of contracts in sense. Chinese and I had to, because I was the real true native English, only true native English speaker in the whole company, I did a lot of translation also. Ah. So I even did a, a, the English recording. You could call like on the, you know, oh, thank you for calling. We're, you know, yeah, because they always, uh, they always get you to do that one. You know, yeah, they got to. <laughs> Multi talented. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. so speaking of contracts, that kind of brings me to Robert. Okay, is it only your mom call you Robert? Because like I just go by your name online. But maybe you're Rob. Robert K. Okay, no, Rob. my mom calls me Robbie. Oh, Everybody okay, Robbie. From... Robbie, tell yeah. us what was Robbie your job? Williams. <laughs> Robbie Williams. What was your job in China? Speaking of contracts, you know what? I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I was an English teacher for two weeks. I lasted two weeks. Wow. 
That's why. That's why. Don't it, be embarrassed. So you the whole time in China, you only worked for two weeks. Is that? What yeah. You're saying well, to us? my my monthly my monthly expenditure <laughs> was uh, my monthly expenditure was two hundred bucks a month, and that was like well, I that's think, inspiring I think for the, people. To the know. average income in the town I live was like fifty bucks a month. It was I mean oh, it was a rich. cheap place. So yeah, um, I wanted to study. I literally studied from sun up to sundown every day. But when that's I taught good. English, you don't distracted by work. When I was teaching English, so teaching English in China to everybody out there, I'm sending you a warning. It I think this sucks. is important. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Tell me, did you get the job? Hard. <laughs> ah, did you get the job before you came? This is what I want to know. No. Oh, you got it after? Because yeah. I find a lot of people run into problems when they get a job online and they come here and it's not at all Don't what they said it was. Don't do it. Yeah. You, so I was told. So over time, just all these little things that I should have been more careful about, but. The classes were structured, so if I work, I can't just come in at eight and work to twelve, and then work four hours, get paid for four hours. Like the classes were like forty-five, fifty minutes, and then there'd be a ten-minute break, and then I'd have another class for forty-five, fifty minutes, and I didn't get paid for two hours. I'd get paid for like an hour and a half because there's forty-five minutes, and then I don't oh, get paid bad. for the fifteen-minute break, and that. In my mind, is crap. And then, so I do like an, hour, and it was just interspread throughout the day. So I'll get to work at eight in the morning, and you're not done till five at night, and you've only worked four hours because there's all these breaks in between, and it's just crap. So it sounds like they'll say on the contract you get paid so much per hour, and you're thinking you're working all these hours. The problem like, was I didn't see the qu- the contract uh, before. I just like I just I went in like dressed up all suave into the office, and you know there's not too many suave looking <laughs> walk-ins in that part of the, <laughs> people walk that part of the world. Yeah. So this I read the contract after like I had already gone and made my visa run, and I was like this is absolute crap. Like I wouldn't have done this signed up if I didn't you know if I knew it was going to be like this. Was it a one-year contract? They I saw the contract, and then but I had a one-year visa, yeah. uh-huh. and so as soon as I got the visa, I quit. Because I was like, I'm just not going to put up with this garbage. And it was also, it was a, a, some some foreign um, woman running it. it. wasn't Chinese I was dealing with. But yeah. um, she was out of the country at the time. And uh, and so, like, I just got in huge fights with the Chinese. And they told me they were going to call the cops if I didn't leave their premises. For... <laughs> Learning Chinese is a little overwhelming. Sometimes it even feels like I forget more than I learn. Not sure how that's possible. Hmm. Maybe I need to take more ginkgo biloba? Yeah, probably. But have you heard of ChinesePod? They have an amazing new tool called the Recap app. You can choose 90 second, 3 minute, or 6 minute lesson recaps. Whatever fits your schedule. The app even populates itself with the reviews of the lessons you've most recently studied. Cool. Maybe I don't need to get my head checked. Maybe. ChinesePod.com forward slash recap. Because I, I actually, I, I was so pissed off at them. I spent, like, I didn't have very much money at the time, and I ran all the way to, to Hong Kong to get a visa. or what, I was just really, really angry. So I was, like, waiting outside. Like, I tried, basically ended up taking half the students from the school and uh, teaching them in the park and uh, for the summer. So, like, <laughs> so I, you stole half the students of the school? From, from that age group, and that yeah. was really, really bad of me. But I was so angry. Like, that was, now I'm a much more nicer guy. I'm a little more relaxed. But, like, <laughs> right. but, like they really screwed me. So I was like, I'm going to get them back. Because so many times you're helpless in China, but this is the one time. How I, did you get the students to go with you? Well, they all really, really liked me because I gave them really, like, really good the lessons. You at 12 o'clock. Um, all the other teachers in the town were old and just, like, just not, and they didn't speak any Chinese. And so this, the kids just really Really had a good time, I think, with me, and I did my best to, to give them a good time. And so um, I got all their email addresses and phone numbers, like secretly, on the last class before I knew I was going to quit. And then I just quit, and I told all the students right at the end in the school. And <laughs> well, this is good, though. I mean, I'm least... surprised I didn't get knocked off. Yeah, over like the there. ninjas would come knock you off. <laughs> but it's pretty good to know that, like, maybe the contracts when they're bad, they are flexible because they didn't cancel your visa. Is that they right? They can't. Can I checked everything oh, out. Can't. So I had a lot of Chinese so friends, my teachers, out. everybody there yeah. I, I had like a lot of a lot of Chinese friends backing me otherwise I wouldn't have dared to screw around with with the company backed by Chinese people even though I was dealing with Westerners and uh, they went to the gov I mean some of my friends were government officials and so uh, my eyes husband and so they all like checked and they said there's no, there's nothing they can do to you all about Guanxi, everybody. yeah mm. okay so we've heard two <laughs> stories <Homer. laughs> two stories on working in China everybody else can go to the comment section dear ever and leave some of their experiences it'd be good to hear everyone else's hope that helps Jack hear about English teaching and what is that a startup company 
Yeah. Let me Start add one more thing. Time. Can oh, I add one more thing? Stuff. Robert doesn't want to get off the bike. And I want to say one more thing. <laughs> Teaching Robbie. Chinese kids when you're not... It's so cute that you call me that. <laughs> Teaching Chinese kids outside of like a crappy contract situation is great. They're some of the funnest, just coolest, um, just new and honest and naive. And it's just this great awesome. little mixture of characteristics that I think you don't see as much in so the West. So your advice is that you said teaching English in China is crap, but if you steal students and teach in the park, it's great. Basically. Right on. <laughs> exactly. I guess you hit the nail exactly. on the head. This question comes from Clay. Clay asks, Dear Amber, why do so many people outside in China wear those surgical masks? Why in the masks? hell do they wear those masks? <laughs> yes, it came from Clay himself, and he's here to answer the question himself. I'm very baffled by this. Yeah, well, the weather has turned cold in Shanghai, and we did notice there is a plethora of surgical masks. I mean, Big it's word. not limited to surgical masks, like, you know, doctor's masks. There's also, I mean, lately I've noticed there's a lot of Winnie the Pooh is pretty popular. Mm. Some of them are made of fabric. Sometimes people they're seem to homemade. just... They're homemade. Yeah, they're homemade. There's homemade masks. There's doctor's masks. But they're not just... Sur- I mean, the only way masks. I can describe it would be a surgical mask, but obviously they're not performing surgery. Yeah. They all wear them. Not all. I mean, you see it a lot. Yeah. And I think like our first reaction when we do see the surgical mask, we're like, man, like kind of like, thinking that yeah, like you've got like disease, like yeah. TB or something. But then later upon talking to some of the locals, I realized that wasn't the reason people are wearing it. And probably the people that do have TB and should be wearing it aren't. <laughs> But even if they did, they're again they're homemade and they only it's it's not overly hygienic. I mean, it's not blocking yeah. anything. The sides are open. Yeah, people are touching it and they look quite dirty sometimes I as think well. It's quite funny. So personally. really, why do Chinese people wear those? Why do they wear them? Why are they so? Dear common? Amber, why do they wear those things? Well, I've asked around and first reason actually has to do with the Chinese fear of cold wind. Um, Connie told us that often people wear it so that the wind will not sort of like blow in their Cold face. Cold will kill I mean, of you. course, none of us like... Don't we have a lesson on that? Yeah, we do. An intermediate <laughs> lesson on that, which kind of elaborates on other aspects of the fear of cold. It will kill you. I mean, you. I'm also... I also fear colds. So, I mean, I don't blame them. But I, oh, I also think a scarf... No, you don't. You... I thought you said you... Uh, you walk outside with your wet hair and people freak out. That's true. I fear it in different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I fear cold feet in bed. But anyways, um, I'm thinking personally, okay, like a scarf is much more comfortable. I have worn a coat jiao before. By the way, everyone, we're going to teach no, you, you how you not. say it in Chinese. To say wear a surgical mask or a mask is called dai, which is dai is to wear it on your face. Yeah. And ko jiao. Right, let me, let's back up. When did you wear a, a <laughs> surgical mask? I, that's I why refuse I, to call it just a mask. It's a I am the mask. expert on this topic, sort of, because I was in Taiwan during the peak of SARS okay. a few years ago. And not that I was a paranoid freak thinking I need to wear that mask or that that mask would protect me. But did you know at that time in Taiwan, if you wanted to take the subway, I was going to school every day. It was a requirement that you had to wear. Was it really? A like mask. you actually had to wear it? Yes, by they wouldn't let, yeah, they wouldn't let you in That's the subway. But I mean, it was kind of funny. I mean, it was more, I think, of a sort of like a mental piece sort of thing. Because I mean, people are like adjusting them. Like they take the mask off to cough. Like <laughs> I've seen that. And like the Winnie the Pooh masks are not really stopping any germs, right? So is yours like an actual. Like doctor issued surgical mask, or was it like a sock with rubber it bands was. on it? It was, and I mean, it was it was sort of April May at that time, which is not the hottest time in Taiwan, but it's pretty hot and humid. And I can tell you, there is nothing worse than like your hot air breath breathing out into hot, humid face, sweaty surgical mask. It was awful. So let's bring us to winter time. They wear them. What's the deal? Okay, so there's the cold just to keep their face warm, basically. That's one reason. Another reason, like a Connie, windshield. Yeah, kind of like a windshield. An <laughs> ugly windshield. <laughs> <laughs> it works. So you know, you just hook it around your ear. It's convenient. Okay. It's reusable. So that's an actual reason. Yeah. Okay. And Connie also said that in Beijing, there's on the northern parts of China, there's a lot of sandstorms as well, certain mm. times of the year. So I mean, really, that uh-huh. would so you, help. To we just wear bandanas in Texas. Off. So it's pulling more. <laughs> just kidding. Thought, oh, like the cowboys. Just <laughs> hey guys, it's Michael here at Chinese Pod, and we want to say thank you to all of our faithful subscribers. If you're not registered yet, head over to ChinesePod.com now and get 20% off. We got promo codes, promo codes. Save your money. Promo codes, promo codes. Chinese. Register now at ChinesePod.com. Use promo code GET20 at checkout to get 20% off your first year.
Yeah, and another thing is, um, our local friends told us it wasn't that prevalent before SARS actually wearing a when coat. Was that yeah. again? It was like a couple years ago, two years ago. Mm, I wasn't actually. No, it was time. more. It was more like three or four okay. years ago. But after that, I guess everyone became a lot more conscious of germs. And Connie said that actually, even now, people will wear it when they themselves have the flu, so that they don't infect other people. Really. Yeah. I don't know if the Winnie the Pooh will keep out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a the thought germs. that counts. I guess it is a thought that counts. <laughs> and also, um, it also probably protects people from, you know, other people's germs as well. I mean, there's it, so many people crowded in a subway. If you got the mask, you might have a certain sense of security. Well, I do think it's funny because a lot of, I think a lot of Westerns, when they come over here, I think that's one thing you notice and no one really knows what it was. So this is the thing. Okay. I know another big, big reason, at least in Taiwan, why, why people wore uh, those face masks What's that? was because um, they felt that to keep pollution out, they would like filter the pollution. Hmm. You think that works? But actually, I saw an article and it said that pollution particles are actually way too small. They can <laughs> enter that fabric mask so <laughs> that would come as common knowledge to me i think yeah but i think at least it keeps the dirt off your face right? are they trying yeah you know <laughs> oh and this just in actually i found out that um i've been pronouncing kojia wrong my whole I was, life I, th- I was gonna say something <laughs> oh ever. you didn't know I you didn't even know the word <laughs> but the real pronunciation is not kojia it's kojia yeah. c-h-a-o c-h-a-o yeah, uh, which actually means like to cover yeah so ko is like mouth mouth cover Oh, man. Chinese, you gotta love it. (laughs) I love it. Uh Yeah, so anyways, we just wanted to do this segment because we're used to it now, but we kind of realized, yeah, we remember the feeling the first time we saw it, and we were a bit nervous. What are they doing? Because you see that, again, doctors and guys mowing your yard. Yeah. (laughs) That's the only time (laughs) I've ever seen those. So the code, the code, yeah, actually, it's it's like a universal blanket tool. It can be used to keep out the wind. It can be used to keep out the germs. Well, in your your mind, at least, sand, lawnmower clipping. Are there any lawns? here, Clay. I never saw anyone That's wearing one morning lawn. <laughs> but anyways, and yeah, they became more common after SARS. Kind of like a little trendy item around here. Well, thanks for the input, Amber. Yeah. That's been, I've been dying to know those. So today's question about wearing surgical masks kind of inspired a new segment for Dear Amber. Today will be the first segment on how to say something in Chinese that you'll never learn anywhere else. So the question about wearing a face mask called to mind images of hypochondriacs. So I started thinking, how do you say that in Chinese? So we looked it up, consulted the experts, and how you say hypochondriac in Chinese is yi bing zheng. Now, this is an interesting word because the E comes from the character for huayi, which means to doubt or to worry. Then the bing, of course, is the sickness, bing. And finally, zheng is zheng zhuang, the zheng, which is symptom. So really, literally, hypochondriac in Chinese means to suspect that you have a sickness. (laughs) So I think it's very, it just shows the logic of Chinese. Very interesting. That's it for this week's Dear Amber, the insider's guide to everything China. Don't forget to send all your questions about China to dearamber at praxislanguage.com. And don't forget to go to the comment section of Dear Amber today found in the Extras tab at Chinese Pod, where you can get more info about today's show and share your own thoughts about what we talked about today. We'll see you next time. Xiaoyi zijian.